Hi, this video is an update to a video I did six months ago about how good rope is now, attaching rope to objects. Um, I've had a lot of comments on there saying, it's all very well, it's a great system, but it, it doesn't attach to rigid objects. You know, um, you have to put a cloth tag on, which then makes it um, floppy, and it, we want it to attach to rigid, which I think is an oversight on Maxon's part. I sent them an, an email about this, and their reply was to send me a link back to my own video, the one that you've been watching. So that didn't help. Luckily, I have a viewer, Murat, I'll give you a shout out, who has spotted um, a kind of a workaround for this, how to get uh, the rope to attach to rigid objects without using the rigid body from the bullet tags. This is using the, the simulation system and we have to use cloth because they only connect by using cloth. Um, so I'm going to show you quickly now how, how we do it. So if I just play this, you'll see that on, <laughs> as you can see straight away, we're using a cage basically. So without a cage, look, this is kind of probably what you've been seeing is um, trying to attach to something that's got lots of geometry, like this plane has got that. And that is what happens basically. It just attaches to it as a cloth object, however much you try and stiffen it up, um, which I can probably do on here, but it's really not going to get anywhere near a rigid object. It's still going to fall apart. Uh, so with a cage, that's what we've got here that we've balanced we've, we've actually attached all of the information to the cage and not to the object sorry the object inside so how do we do that should we just set up this scene um all right so if we just grab these these aeroplanes here or just put in toy i think that comes up there we go so there it is let's just make that a little bit bigger and Right, so if we just go to ground shading lines, you can see that it's complex. There's a lot going on there. So if we just put, um, also before we do that, let's just right click and make this um, connect objects and delete. So we just get one item here. If we right click and add cloth to that, obviously if we then press, let's turn off the, no, we don't need to turn off gravity. So want to see what it's gonna do. Basically, it's basically just going to crumple up like that because it's, it's cloth. Even if you try and um, strength, um, stiffen it up by taking off all the softness and everything, it still doesn't do it. So what we do is we don't put the cloth tag on the object. We create a cage, right? So if we just go for a cube, um, now we might want this to be more closely matching the object underneath. Okay, that's another issue that we can we can discuss right so basically you need to cover your object like this but only just you don't want it to be much bigger you want to just cover the object like that and we also need to add just another couple of segments on there because we need somewhere for this rope to attach to so we just put the cross on there by adding two in x and two in z right what we do now is we go to the deformer menu and we grab a mesh okay and we put the mesh as a child of the, the object we want which is our toy plane and then in mesh here we've got cages it's asking for a cage so we're going to use this cube as the cage so drop that into there and then we hit initialize and you'll see then that the memory will go up and it will be it will have this object inside it there we go so we've now got 15.5 meg of memory. It's, it's held that object inside this cage. So now we can apply the um, cloth tag directly to the cube, this low poly cage that we've made. And let's just call that cage just so we're not confused what's happening. So that's the cage, look, right click, simulation cloth. Um, now if we just, let's just go to the side view here and let's just grab our, let's just close that, let's just grab um, like a spline pen and then just, just pop that up there and go to somewhere near the cage and escape out. Right, let's get that looking like a rope. So we just want to get uh, a sweep and an end side, bring the end side down to something like one, sweep the end side onto the spline 
put a rope tag on the spline and also a connector. All right, now let's just go back to our perspective view and have a look. So now we see we've got our rope. Oh, hang on, that's not it's not in the right orientation. There we go, <laughs> X, Y. Um, so here yeah, we have our rope and we have our connector. So if we now um, go to our connector and go update live straight away, as soon as we pressed update live, look, it shot a little yellow thread out to connect to the top of this cage, okay? Where our plane is held in inside. So now, if we just press play, ah, before we do that, we need to hold the rope at the top, don't we? Because at the moment, the rope's not attached here. So we go to spline, we go to our point uh, tool, hit, the, sorry, <laughs> we come out of um, point mode, we go to our normal selection tool, uh, select the top node, um, go back onto rope, and then we say set just here, fixed set, and that'll go purple. So that'll hold that um, point at the top. Now, if we press play, we wind, press play. You see, we've now got, now we've probably got, um, let's have a look at this, this mesh here. Oh, yeah, we can take off the bendiness, right? We just take off the bendiness and go to front collision, and then just try that again. There we go. So now if we just add, let's add some turbulence into the scene just to make sure that we can get this thing swinging around in a load of turbulence. Now, if we just come out of that and press play. Okay, let's add some more frames into this so you can see it working longer. And we can also make, let's just make the spline um, not adaptive on the rope, but um, say uniform and say about 30 points. Just check the connector's still working. Ah, it, it hasn't. So what you have to do is just jiggle that and it will reconnect. Now, watch this. It'll obviously come down a little bit, like it's on a springy cord. Um, so the more subdivisions you put in, in the rope, the, the more bendy it will be. And you, if you want it not to go as far as that, you, you can take the target length down. So you could say 80. And then what that will do is counter the amount of extra subdivisions we put in to make it more rope-like and it will kind of stretch it back up again. But as you can see, the plane is being held perfectly okay within that cage and it's not deforming, okay? Like it was on our original here that I showed you. If you connect, if you put cloth on the, on the actual plane itself and try and connect to it, you're gonna get all these problems, right? So the cage, the mesh deformer, that, Murat, I'll say thank you again. If I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Um, great credit to you, my friend. That has saved us a lot of time. Now, hopefully, Maxim will make this update and they'll just have a simple tick box to say, make object rigid, something like that. That's all we need. But for now, what an amazing workaround. I thought I'd get this out there really quickly so you can not struggle any longer. You can make whatever you want and the other thing we can do here, which I won't show in this video, is the cage can be more closely contoured to your shape. You can just make adjustments to that, you know, because um, I'll just show you this chandelier test is what I've done here. Look, is I've just contoured the cage around it. So now they can more closely connect to each other because, um, because the cloth tag is on the cage, um, it's the cages that will bang and connect together. Not, not the object inside, okay? So that is something to bear in mind. If you've got complex items like this, you need to make the cage contour around it. Okay, if you've got any questions, I, and hopefully you have, because this is, a, this is big news. I'm really happy now. I can start to do some really good effects with this until I wait for the update. If you've got any comments, leave them below. I'll be glad to answer them as quickly as possible for you. My name is Mike Jones from Visual Animation. Take care, goodbye for now.